This is episode 30 of our podcast. Uh, we're excited about doing these. It's been a while. We finished uh, the 10 Lessons on Marriage. And if you haven't went through that, we encourage you to do that on our, pull them up on our web page. And uh, you can walk through how to help in your marriage. But today, I want to speak on depression. Uh, the struggle that we have as Christians with depression. Someone asked me the, uh, the other day, is it, uh, does Christians get depressed? And I told him, have you read the Bible? Uh, the Bible talks about being depressed. Uh, David struggled with depression. He double struggled with it over his kids, uh, especially Absalom. And, and, you know, we struggle with depression because life is not always uh, full of the things that we want. Uh, they're full of the things that God will allow us to have. And, and that's hard for us to understand sometimes. And so when we deal with this subject of depression, and this is, this is going to be a series that I'm going to do on depression, that Christians do get depressed, I want to, I, someone gave this to me. It's not something I have put together. And I don't even have, who, who is the author of this except for the scripture. And I think it's good how it's broken down. It's Psalms 23. And, and he breaks this down like this. The Lord is my shepherd. And equals, that's our relationship. He's our, our shepherd. I shall not want that he supplies us. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And I like that because that gives us rest and we need rest and uh, one of the hardest things that people go through in, in depression they need to get rest uh, they need to in order to fight what they're going through he restoreth my soul that's healing we need to have God's healing in our life he guides me in the path of righteousness that's the guidance that he gives us that's the path he gives us for his name's sake, that's our purpose. What we do is for him. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that's testing. And, you know, I was last couple of weeks, I've, I've been dealing with uh, the loss of my brother. And it's been very hard. Uh, I miss him. We're very close. Uh, we're brothers, but he was my best friend. And someone said, you know, he's in heaven, and you should be happy. I am happy that he's in heaven. I know he's in heaven. Uh, in the last couple of days that I saw my brother, he was just witnessing and sharing Christ with anybody he could. But he passed. He's in heaven. I'm here. I don't, can't pick up the phone and call him. And that's always a big deal. Because uh, my brother, brother is about the smartest guy I knew, and uh, I have I'm dealing with that. And um, I talked to my sister, and for some reason she is too. And he died about three months ago. And so when I go through depression, I you know I I understand that I lost my pastor uh, that uh, basically guided me in my youth. And I called him my pastor, and just a great man. He was, he was, I think, 91, and he passed. And I've been dealing with the loss of him. Losses are tough, uh, hard to deal with. Uh, and we've had a number of them because, you know, you look at me. I'm old, and I'm in that range that people that I know and love pass away. And then it's always harder to when young people pass away. And my son did a funeral yesterday, or yes, yeah, yesterday of, of a young man that, uh, that passed away. And, uh, and then another young man passed away that was in his late 30s. And that, that's, that's really tough. And I, I had known him as acquaintance. So we walk through the shadow of death, and that's what we feel like. That's, that's the testing. I'm not going to give up my relationship with Christ because my brother passed. No, I'm going to get closer to him. 
But we walk through the shadow of death. That's testing. For you are with me. That's understanding every day that he is with me. He's with you. And that's just a great feeling to have. I have two cockapoos. Uh, and uh, they're about, about a year apart in, in age. I have uh, one that I got when I lost my, my big dog, uh, Lab. His name was Dewey. And so when we got the cockapoo, I really wasn't going to get another dog because I was having a hard time dealing with the loss of my dog. And so I uh, got this cockapoo. We actually went down to Fresno and, and picked him up. And, and he sat on my lap until he got, got home. And basically, he's at home right now waiting for me to get there, looking out the door. And he's, uh, he's a great dog. And he wants to be by my side wherever I go. When I sleep, he wants to be by my side. He just wants to get as close as he can. And I think about that, and I think about that's our relationship with God. We need to get as close as we can because he is faithful. He is faithful, and we need to be faithful. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That's discipline. You know, the Bible talks about discipline. And discipline is a, a way of knowing that uh, when I punished my kids when they were having a struggle, I didn't do it because I was mad at them. I did it for change and let them know that, you know, I love, love them. Your, your rod and your staff, they comfort me, gives us discipline. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. This is hope. This is what God does. This thing called hope. We need to understand the importance of hope in our life. And don't allow people or things to rob us of our hope. You anoint my head with oil. That's concentration. He, he wants us to have that very thing that gives us the power to deal with the things that we face in this life. My cup overflows. He wants us to have it in abundance. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Follow me all the days of my life. You know, God wants to bless us. In heaven, he just has all these blessings for us. But Matthew tells us, he, he that... Uh, uh, you bind it on earth, it'll be bound in heaven. You let loose on earth, and God's blessings come down upon us here uh, on this earth. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Security. You know, church is a very important thing. Uh, this can relate in two things. Our dwell in the house of the Lord. That's Christ in us. But I think we need to understand God placed church as the earthly th place that Christians can go and get uplifted and uh, get that extra step to go another step. And then he goes for forever. And that means eternity. I thank God for eternal life. I thank God that if I could roll back the heavens... All those folks that, uh, that have did funerals and, and my family members, uh, my child that was miscarried, you know, I get a chance to see them. My mom, my dad, my brother, and that's exciting. When Stephen was being stoned to death, now I want you to understand this. When Stephen was being stoned to death, he looked up at the heavens and he saw the wonderful sight. He saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. And he was, I think, that he was giving Stephen a, a standing ovation for what he did. He was, he was being stoned for witnessing. But there was one other thing that took place. His clothes were put at the feet of Saul. And of course, we know Saul. Uh, got saved on the road to Damascus, and that's an interesting story. 
And I won't cover it. Maybe some other time. You just run through that whole thing. There's so many points that are just, if you get an opportunity to read that, that's in Acts chapter 7 and 8. If Hebrews tells us there's a great cloud of witnesses, and I do believe if we roll back the heavens, you'll see all those folks that went before me, and they're rooting for me to take that. They're on my side. And that's an amazing thing. When you think of the number of people that are in heaven, that are in that great cloud of witnesses rooting for us. So we're going to start on hope. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you expected end. Now that's that's found in Jeremiah 29, 11. I love this because you, you understand what, what God had Jeremiah write down. And this is God. He says, I know thy thoughts that I think towards you. What does he think towards us? I'm going to tell you, he thinks of love towards us. Because how do I know that? Saith the Lord. He wants us to have peace. And peace is a big thing in our life to have. In order to fight depression, you've got to come to a place of peace. And, and peace is huge. And I use that term all the time, huge. It's so big to have peace. And, and then he goes on, his thoughts are not evil. He doesn't. Don't blame God for the things that happen in your life that are bad. Blame the person that's trying to, to influence you to, to not walk with Christ, and that's the devil. But when God looks down and his thoughts are, uh, are not evil towards us, and to give you an expected end. I love it. Give you an expected end. He's going to walk with us tell our ending. He knows my thoughts. You know, I looked in every translation that I had, and I, not all, there's, I think there's 250 different translations now. But I looked in the major ones dealing with this, and they all basically said, uh, the, except, uh, said about the same thing. But the important thing is expected end. God has that special thing for us all the way to the end. That expected in. I I do believe we all have a purpose. We all have a purpose that God has given us, and we need to find that purpose in our life. And Hebrews eleven one is probably one of the great verses in the Bible because it deals with those things that we cannot see. And what brings on depression? Things that we see. But Hebrews 11, 1 deals with what we can't see and what God wants for us. And so he, he writes, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that are not seen. Now substance is things, is my desk, uh, it, is, it is chairs, it's substance, the thing you need, it's a car. It's a house. That's substance. Now, God wants us to understand our faith can give us the substance. You know, I, I look at the homeless population that we have here in Sacramento, and it's all over the United States, but you, you go down one road, and it, it's just, just like home. It's just like uh, just tent after tent and trash, trash, trash. And my thoughts go... I wonder how many of those are Christians. Now, we have a ministry to the homeless, handing out tracts and, uh, and giving them a sandwich. And, and I'm so excited about that. But in our life, your life, my life, it is substance. Faith is. Now, faith is an action uh, word. The book of Acts is basically faith in 
action. You have the four Gospels, then you have Acts. And, and the four Gospels get you prepared for the book of Acts. And, and that is, in that book, there's so many action things. Now, I like to, when I watch a movie, I basically want it to be an action movie, that there, there's things happening in it. Uh, but that's what faith is for you and I. In order that we have the substance we want, we have to have greater faith. Now, substance of things hoped for. Now, hope. Hope's that very essence that God wants us to have and that we hope for a better day. I hope this day, you know, I had a rough night. Uh, I have neuropathy and it just would not let me go to sleep last night. Rough night. And finally, I got it under control. They gave me medicine to deal with it. And finally, it's calmed down. If you have that, you understand what I'm talking about. But when I got up, well, I didn't sleep. I think maybe got an hour's sleep. I got up and I said, I'm hoping for a better day than what I had through the night. There's so many wonderful things in this world. I'm a privileged man. I know it. I pastor a church. I administer a school. Uh, I, I have a church that's not big, but we love each other. There's one thing that we know we love each other. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for. And there's a lot of things I hope for. We're hoping to extend our auditorium. I'm hoping for that to take place. And, you know, that's an exciting thing for us. It's a walk of faith. I mean, that is a walk of faith. One time we are going to build an auditorium gym across the street. We had three and a half acres. But the economy went south, and we just held up. And so things I've hoped for, and this last little thing, and the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. I don't see it. I don't see it out there. I do, I see the things that I can see, but this is talked about things I don't see. See, God lives in a spiritual world. That's why we're to worship him in spirit and truth. God's out there and has these substance for us, and we don't see him. We don't see the path, how it's going to take place. We just hope for it to take place, and I'm going to walk the walk of faith. And so the walk of faith is so important in our hope. And the stronger my faith is, the greater hope that I can have. Romans 12.12 12 says, Rejoicing in hope, patience in tribulation, continue instant in prayer. Now, he said here, Paul writing, he says rejoicing in hope. Now, we just talked about hope being something we don't see. It's out there. So I'm going to rejoice on what's out there. Today, I have no clue what's going to come about. i got a plan of the, pretty much my day. But there's things out there that might come my way. Good things come my way. Bad things might come my, my way. And what I'm going to do with those bad things, I'm just going to ride it out. I uh, rode a bucking horse one time. I mean, you know. And he wound up bucking me off. And the guy that was that was teaching me, he says, get back on. I said, what? Get back on? I just got bucked off. He says, you're not going to learn any lessons unless you get back on. Huh. That's life. We don't learn the lessons unless we deal with the problems we deal with. So he says, rejoicing and hope the rejoicing in the day that's better than my night. And then patience and tribulation. What does he mean, patience and tribulation? When things go bad, and they go bad at everybody's life, my life, your life, there's periods of time that they go bad. And in those periods of time, we have to have this thing called patience. Now, James explains to us what patience is. And so... We need to understand 
the, the, the trying of our faith worketh patience. And so in tribulation, we're going to learn patience. Someone came to me and said, Pastor, you just have so much patience <laughs> inside. I'm just laughing. I said, I appreciate that. <laughs> but I walked away. <laughs> they didn't know me at all. I'm the, one of the most impatient guys there is. But I've learned you got to wait. you got to wait. And when tribulation comes, and it's going to come, it's a testing. It's, this isn't the tribulation in the book of Revelation seven years. But, you know, in my life, tribulation, those testing periods sometimes last seven years. And after the seventh year, you know, I've walked through all this stuff and then one thing after the other for seven years. And I've been here at the church 47 years come several weeks from now in May. And so when these tribulation comes my way, it seems like seven years. At the end of the seven years, God just really blesses me with something, you know, I didn't think I'd have. A 65 Mustang. I always wanted one. When I was 16, uh, when the 65 Mustangs come out, of course, I'm 16, I want to drive, and the car I wanted was a Mustang. About 20 years ago, after I went through some real trying, God gave me an old rust bucket, a Mustang. And, you know, it needed work, and, and it was a work of project and a work of love. And I did that and took that Mustang and, and went through repaint, brought some, you know, just, just, it just was great. Put uh, power steering in it, you know. It, there's just so many things, and God allowed me to do all that. That was a reward for going through the testing, the other side of it. So he said, patience in tribulation. Continue instant in prayer. Okay, there it is. What do we do? Continue instant in prayer. If you don't have communication with your wife and your family, it's, it's going to be a problem. It's going to come to be a problem. In order to fix that problem, what, what, what must we do? We must communicate. And I covered that in the marriage lessons. But when we're not praying, we've lost communication with God. That is our communication. But this all comes by staying constant in prayer and asking God to help me to walk the walk of faith, walk the walk of being guided, and allow God to work in my life. Now, do I get depressed? Oh, yeah. I struggle with it every day of my life. It's part of my, my mother struggled with it. I, and part of that, I struggle with it. And my sister struggles with it. And my brother did. It was just patience. I mean, depression. And depression is uh, that thing that you can't see. So how am I going to fight it? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So hope is what? Can't see. Depression is that thing that comes on us that we cannot see. So if we fight it with hope, the battle of hope and depression, and we can slowly come back to where we need to be. And I'm going to spend some time dealing with this and depression because it's a big thing. It's a, a huge thing, uh, you know, struggling with things that happened to your body these last 13 years. And my body's just been a wreck from things that happened. Blood infection came in, started eating up all my organs, had surgery, and the doctor put the screw in my nerve and my spine. I lived nine years of that just to 
was constant in pain and couldn't figure out what was going on and and had to teach me how to learn to walk again because of it. So I went to this doctor not long ago. And he said, I can fix it. There's a screw in your nerve. And he pulled that screw out, and boy, he did fix it. That's what God does. He wants to fix things in our life. He looks for that screw to pull it out. That thorn in your flesh, you're going to have one. Paul dealt with it. And because of that, that thorn's going to be a thing that's going to bring depression upon your life. If this has been a help to you, please like, like us on, on uh, our podcast and, and maybe make a little comment on what takes place. Uh, and remember our ministry. Uh, we need your power of prayer. Uh, ministering in the state of California, I love this state. I do. And all it's bad, and there's bad, but there's so much better things in this state. I just love the state. And God called me here to, to be that light. So I need you to pray for me and pray for our ministry, if you would. Let's end in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, God, we ask right now, we've covered a little bit, just a taste of a little bit, how to deal with the depression in our life. Now, we do understand that there's physical things and our bodies out of, chemi- out of whack chemi- chemically. And we do understand that doctors are very, very important. But I'm going to deal with the things of the spirit world. You know, that's why I went and got a doctorate's degree in, in counseling. Because I was concerned about Christians going through depression. And we praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you're struggling with depression, uh, give me a call. Our phone number is on there, 916-728-5500, extension 11. And leave a message. I'll get back with you and try to help you as much as I can. I have a bunch of folks that come into my office all the time dealing with this. So if I can be a blessing, let me be. God bless you until the next time.